you're watching roughly 100 trillion cells in action. That's how many cells scientists estimate are in the human body. Of course, not all the cells are the same. They grow in different sizes and types, but specialized cells working together form tissues, which then create organs. There are about 60 different organs in the body, such as the heart, the kidney, even the skin, and all those organs working together form the organism that is the human body. I'm also getting an idea of overall structure, so obviously it's very spherical, the cells are packed together very well, that, that makes me super happy. Um, so is that a, that is a liver or a liver cell or a bunch of cells? A that bunch would make of a liver? liver cells. So a bunch of liver cells. Yes. Okay. And of course, other cells that are also found in the liver. Um, and so I'm actually, and so this is actually giving me information about how healthy the organ is. So I can look at this and I can say, oh, you know, these liver cells are producing the factors that they would if they were in your body. And that's an important point. The collection of human cells that Ivy Mead is examining is about 300 microns wide. That's about the width of a human hair. The cells are not taken directly from a body, but they are alive, and they were grown in a lab from stem cells. Those are embryonic forms of cells that researchers can guide into forming specific types of cells. So this is another factor that they'd be producing that also shows that they're healthy. And I like this image because I can actually get an idea of the, the not only, you know, yes, it's forming this, this cohesive ball of cells, but I can also see sort of the, the terrain, the texture of the organ. I'm looking for, for channels, possible channels, like maybe that looks like it might be a channel right there, or maybe up there, because um, we want a perfusion of um, air and, and nutrients in and out of this, uh, this organoid. Otherwise, the cells in the inside start dying. That bit of biological engineering allows the creation of this. It's an organoid, a collection of cells that exhibits the workings of a human liver. That's the science behind regenerative medicine, what's being called the next evolution of medical treatment. So to get you know, a micro liver, um, or later on a micro heart or uh, blood vessel or, or lung, uh, we first have to have cells, um, which can come from a variety of sources. They can come from human tissues, um, stem cells. There's multiple ways to do it. The cells are then combined with a polymer matrix, or proteins, to create a gel, which can support the cells. This living gel mixture is then placed into a bioprinter. It's similar to an inkjet printer, except using biological material. The gel is then deposited into a three-dimensional form. The collection of perhaps roughly 200,000 liver cells eventually begins working together and takes on the function of a working liver. It sort of combines you know, engineering, um, material science, uh, some very high level biology. Repeat the process with cells from other organs, link them together with a synthetic blood substitute and eventually a collection of miniaturized human organ-like hearts, lungs and livers can be collected on a countertop. If it looks a bit like an electrical circuit, you're right. That's the concept behind a program titled, appropriately enough, The Body on a Chip. But here we have kind of a, a simplified system that we can look at the complex interactions of the body uh, without having to do it in a human and without having to do it in animals. The military is funding this unique $24 million project the goal is to build a miniaturized system of human organs to model the body's response to harmful agents, such as chemical weapons. But it can also be used to test the effectiveness of new medicines. The system could save millions of dollars and reduce by several years the development costs and time for new drug therapies. Then what we're doing is we're modeling the response of the tissue to a certain chemicals. And we want this model to be as reliable and as um, replicative of what's going on in our body. Which brings us back to that tennis player and the folks walking the trail. Our bodies function and we can do everything we do because our organs are working together. Scientists believe creating microorgans on a chip 
will allow them to see the effects of medicines and chemicals on one or more organs together and extrapolate that to how those medicines and chemicals would affect our bodies. So we will have all the cells there in the correct composition and orientation to represent your liver or, or, or your heart and so on. So now when the drug diffuses into that tissue, diffuses into the cells, now the cells will respond exactly the same way as they would respond uh, in, a, in an intact uh, human being. What happens is that some of these cells will take the drug and change it a little bit. So a drug that may have not been toxic before, now once it goes to the liver, may be toxic, and then guess what? If it has some cardiotoxicity, if it is toxic to the, to the heart, then once it gets into the circulation, gets into the heart, and then we've got a problem.